What's up everybody, TCM here back with another video and I was going to do a technical video this week but my machine crashed so we're going to do a non-technical video about resumes and resume reviews because I am getting a lot of requests recently about resumes. I've been seeing a lot of people saying I'm not getting any interviews, I've got my OSCP or my PMBT or whatever it might be and I'm just not getting anywhere and I say well let me see your resume and nine times out of ten it's a very bad resume so i'm going to educate you all on how to write a proper resume how to get some callbacks for interviews and we'll take it from there so before we do that as always if you like the channel please do hit that like button subscribe comment down below hit the bell you know the drill by now we're going to take a quick word from our sponsor and then we're going to jump right into resume reviews today's video is brought to you by sneak Sneak is running a Fetch the Flag, Capture the Flag competition on Wednesday, November 9. The competition will run from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and will have up to 16 different challenges, including Pwn, Web, Crypto, Forensics, and more. Now, you can actually compete individually or up to a team of five. And the cool thing is you'll actually win some prizes. So you can get prizes, you can get champion swag, and of course, bragging rights. Now registration is super easy. All you gotta do is scroll up to the top of the page, click register for free, fill out the form. And if you're new to CTFs, they're actually running a workshop the week before on November 2nd. You'll have the opportunity to learn best practices and hacking tactics. You'll also have the ability to solve practice challenges in a hands-on environment, and you'll get live support from experts who'll be ready to compete on game day. It's super easy. All you got to do is click this checkbox and hit submit. From here, you are officially registered and will be able to begin on November 9th. If you want to participate in the fun and win some prizes and get some experience with Capture the Flag, all you got to do is go to sneak.co forward slash TCM. Again, that is sneak.co forward slash TCM. Okay, so we're going to look at a example resume here. And this resume was sent to me by a student. We were doing live stream roasting of resumes before. And they sent this in, so I have full permission to share this. We're going to talk about the little things in here that are good, that are bad, and how we can improve. So with this, we have this user, and they just stripped out their information. But what we can see in here is they start out with a summary of competencies. Go right into education, go into skills, go into professional certifications and training, and then start with work experience and kind of just get into a second page down here. So you should limit your resume to two pages at most, unless you're working as a professor or somebody that writes a lot of papers or something along those lines where you have publications. Otherwise, one page if you're new, two page if you've got some experience. This person is working as a pen tester since August 2019. They've been working as support assistant for five years before that. So they've got some experience. We'll talk about this as well. Okay, first thing to note is that we have a huge chunk of space up here that is just allocated to name, LinkedIn, number, location, email. That could probably be spaced out across. Vertic Instead of vertically, we can do horizontally. And that would add a little bit of room. We also have a summary of competencies here that is incredibly long and hard to read. What you need to know is that a hiring manager is going to get 100 plus resumes. Anytime we put out a job posting, we get 100 plus resumes easily. And we have to sort through those very quickly. We're not going to read every single line of your resume at first. So what do we do? We do the competency check, right? We want to say, hey, does this person meet our education requirements? So here they've got education. Great. That's what we're checking for. Do they have skills and certifications that we're looking for? We can come in here and look at the certifications that they have and make that pretty easy. Uh, we'll also look at work experience and some things, but I need a snapshot where I don't want to have to search and hunt down what you do. I see too many people put their certifications down at the bottom or their education down at the bottom. I'm not a big fan of that. Where this person has their education and their, their certifications, I think is good. Now, I think that this is really wordy here. Uh, if you're looking at this, are you going to read this right off the bat? Probably not. I think an objective statement here, maybe three sentences at most is pretty good. And then you can put some short sentences here about the skills that you have. But having five bullet points that are very wordy and very lengthy right off the bat is very hard to read. And I will likely skip over it. So I would say save this for somewhere else and use this space for something else. Now, this person also has education, which is great. I think having education seconds good. People ask, do I need to put my GPA or what grades I got? 
only if you had really good grades and you're new-ish. If you're new and you've got good grades, I think that helps. Otherwise, you can leave your GPA off. Nobody really cares if you graduated with honors or what classes you took unless you're applying to like a graduate program or you're applying to a PhD or something along those lines. Most places don't care, at least in the IT world, okay? So I would say you could put your GPA, you could put that to graduate with honors, but don't start listing classes and everything else here. Just that's gonna take up too much space. Next thing up are your skills. I am not big on putting skills in here. Windows, Linux, Unix. If you're a pen tester, I assume you already know this. Uh, if you're looking at getting into pen testing, I assume you already know this. When we talk about cybersecurity in general, I assume you should know these things. Kali Linux, Nmap, these are just buzzwords. I think you can use something else here. You can put these elsewhere, okay? For example, if you're using Kali Linux, you could say, as a pen tester, I use Kali Linux to perform uh, pen testing with tools such as Burp Suite, Metasploit, whatever, and put those keywords in there. Nobody cares about Putty or nobody cares about Nano or or really Toad or WinSCP if you're doing pen testing, probably even cybersecurity, honestly. So this is just a waste of space here. If this were my resume, I would actually take this out completely. I would reorganize this, have the education, and then move the certifications up to the top. Now, I might organize these certifications differently. Like this person has ISO certifications, which is fine, but I don't know if I'd put the ISO on top. I would lead with what your strongest certification is. The CISA is probably the strongest followed by maybe the Security Plus and the, the CEH. These ISOs can go down towards the bottom, I think. I put your strongest at the top because, again, I don't need to hunt. I don't want to hunt down your certification on your resume. I want to be able to see it easily, okay? They did a good job putting CISA in parentheses. I think they should have done the same thing here for the CEH. Uh, it, oh, it just says training, though. It doesn't say certification. So this says certifications and training. Now, I am not too big on putting training in unless it is really really good training like if it's something that is well known but doesn't have a certification to it like it's an advanced training of some sort put that in there maybe but if you just say ceh training or certified ethical hacker training and you didn't go get the certification i really don't care okay so only put your certifications in here unless the training is that significant that it's worth adding next up is the work experience now this person has uh three lines for work experience and it says assessing, evaluate, network, web, mobile applications, provide assurance. That's okay. I think these could be a little bit wordier in my opinion. And I'm terrible at writing these by the way, but you should have three to four bullet points per job. And the further away your job was, like if it's from 10 years ago, the less bullet points you need, you wanna emphasize more what you're working on now than you did in the past. And with that, you should add some metrics. What I tell people is like, if you're working help desk, for example, you could say, hey, I closed 30 tickets on average a day with an hour or less response time, 97% satisfaction rate. I helped my company save a million dollars. These are all tangible numbers that you can speak to in an interview and also show your value in that position and your value to that company. So think about doing that. Like if you're talking about pen testing and you say, I assess and evaluate networks, talk about maybe how many different pen tests you've done. Surely it's not 5,000 pen tests, but if you've done uh, so many networks, so many web, mobile application, talk about it. Or if you're doing web, talk about using Burp Suite or other tools. If you're doing network, talk about different attacks or internal tools you might use like Impacket, things like that, mobile security, MobSF, right? Talk about the different tools you might use. And that adds a lot of value here and also can use some of these tools and keywords that you have up here without having to put the skills and take up this big chunk of page. As you scroll through, okay, they've got two lines here. Here's some metrics. Look, decreased transaction decline rate. That's great. Okay, some more metrics like that. Another thing is attention to detail, by the way. This is something that I look for and I know other hiring managers do as well. If you're gonna have a period at the end of a sentence, make sure you have periods at the end of all of your sentences, which this person does. This shows good attention to detail. If you're going to be working in cybersecurity, attention to detail is key. If you're going to be writing reports, attention to detail is key. So make sure you're doing those things. Okay. And then volunteer works down here. It's fine. Um, I think there could be more information about this volunteer work. Anything that you can add a value that is considered almost like a soft skill. It doesn't have to be directly related to cyber, but any sort of soft skills on your resume is great. And they have a whole half of a page where they could add more if they wanted to. Now, honestly, they could take all this stuff that they've done and put that into one page easily. 
easily. They're just burning space on this resume. And as long as your, your work experience, by the way, goes back to 10 plus years ago, it's fine as long as it goes into IT. Now, if they are working in a restaurant, for example, this doesn't need to be on your resume once you start having IT jobs. You can just skip all of your other stuff in the past. We don't care about it. I'm not looking for it. And I don't care if you worked at Wendy's 25 years ago, okay? So with that, um, I think this is okay. I think that there are some improvements as we discuss. I'm gonna show you my resume and talk about it. Now, my resume is not perfect either, but I'm gonna show you how we could take a lot of this and make it more readable, more manageable and save space. Starting right at the top, we've got the horizontally aligned address number email. I think that's fine. If you want to put a GitHub up here or a LinkedIn up here, you can absolutely do that. I think it adds a lot of value. With the objective statement, some people say, hey, you need one. Some people say you don't. Really doesn't matter, but it just says, hey, what I'm interested in. Ethical hacking, pen testing, vulnerability analysis, network security. Tells a little bit about myself, but it's not, it's not super wordy. Would you rather read that or would you rather read this? Okay, think about that. Do you rather read this small block of text or this big block of text? It's very digestible. Even though there's a lot of wording here, it's digestible. Here we can start to add some keywords in, like Python and Bash. We could talk about Kali Linux, Metasploit, Burp Suite Pro, without having to have an entire skill section dedicated to just tools, right? Uh, we can come through, we have education, and we have certifications. Now look at this. We are a half a page, not even into this resume. In this screenshot, remember, we talk about 30 seconds or less that's all you get with the first round of a manager looking at your resume. 30 seconds or less, what can you tell about me? Okay, you've got tool sets, you've got degrees, and you've got certifications. Immediately, does this pass the eye test? Am I interested in this person to continue on and reading the rest of the resume? If yes, I'm going to scroll down. If no, maybe not. You have to pass the eye test. So again, it's important that you put your heavy hitters right at the top and make sure that they're there in quick view. You do not want your certifications down here on page two. You do not, just don't do it. Uh, make sure that it's readily available and easily digestible, okay? Um, for certification titles, like the CISSP, make sure you have the full name laid out and you have the certification in here, the, the shortened version, okay? Because you don't know if maybe a system is looking at them before a manager looks at them and is looking for this buzzword or this buzzword. You wanna, you wanna trigger all the buzzwords, okay? So make sure you're condensing these in a way that seems logical. Now, when we scroll through, again, periods on everything, right? Periods at the end of everything, attention to detail is key. Uh, here, you can take these with a grain of salt if you want. I, I don't put a lot of emphasis on my resume in putting in metrics and numbers anymore. Um, even here, like teaching 200,000 students, great. It's still a number, it's still a metric, as a CEO, I'm not submitting my resume to many places, usually just to clients, okay? For this though, you can say, hey, what do you, what type of work do you perform as a, um, as a pen tester, for example? Uh, well, internal, external, I could do better here. I mentioned I was doing Fortune 500, so that means that they were larger organizations. I again mentioned Cali, Metasploit, Burp Suite Pro, Cobalt. I think I could even do a better job here of reorganizing this. Um, if I were back in the market and applying to jobs, I might even add some more stuff in here, okay? Uh, and then here, lastly, looking at my network engineer, still tied to my IT job, my IT life. I actually don't include my help desk time or anything else in here. I include my last three relevant jobs because they were relevant to, the, to that, all right? So it depends on what you want to do, but look at all of what I was able to fit in into one page, all of this. So when I say that all of this resume can go into one page, it's entirely true. They're taking up way too much space with nonsense when you can be condensing it with relevant information that is going to be looked at by a manager. Guess what my second page is? My second page is all the soft skills that I have. And if you want to talk about getting hired in the space, you're talking soft skills. Look, I put my military experience on here. Back when I was applying for jobs, this is for my people in the military. When I was putting my military in my work experience, I was not getting calls back. Employers do not understand how to deal with military members. I started putting it under volunteerism um, until I got out. Once I got out, I put it on here. But I started putting it in volunteerism, like down at the bottom of my page. And I would start getting calls back because I would just tuck it in there that I was in the military. Uh, people will discriminate against you for being in the military, amongst other things. So you need to make sure that... Um, if you're applying to a military forward organization or a government organization somewhere where they might value that, 
It's a little bit different than applying to some random organization that might not understand how to deal with a military member. Okay, outside of that, we also have project work. What projects have you worked on? Me, I've instructed, I do the Cyber Mentor, I've co-founded VetSec, I've done INE teaching. I've done a lot of projects on the side. Do you have a blog? Do you have a YouTube channel? Do you have a GitHub? What are you passionate about that you can show on your resume that will stand out? This is so much more important than almost anything else on your resume. When you're competing with other people, those people likely have degrees. Those people likely have some work experience, even if it's IIT experience. Those people likely have certifications. So if you have all the same aspects as somebody else, what is going to make you more hireable than the other person? Soft skills, extracurriculars, if you have the time to do so, are incredibly, incredibly helpful. Not mandatory, but useful. Okay, so project work, giving talks at conferences. I just throw that all in here. Volunteerism, anything you can talk about. Something I tell people is, for example, if you've done the practical ethical hacking course, you've gone through that and you've built out an Active Directory Lab, why don't you just use that as an example? You can put that in your resume and say, hey, I've done this Active Directory Lab. I know Kerber roasting. I know LMNR poisoning. I know all these attacks. And you can talk about those list tools, list attacks, and show off that you're using extracurricular skill set and time to better yourself. If you're new to the field, you need to be able to sell yourself on your knowledge. Saying you have a certification only goes so far. So if you've built out home labs or did some tooling or whatever it might be, it does show above and beyond. The thing about cybersecurity is that we have to study every single day. It's an ever-changing game. We have to keep on our game and we have to evolve as the industry evolves. If not, if you have complacency, you're going to get left behind. Showing that initiative initially really does help. So think about that. The non-tangible skills, the extracurriculars, the soft skills, they all play a big part in your resume as well. So that is it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. I do have a resume template on GitHub that you can download. I'll link it in the description below if you're interested. And with that, my name is the Cyber Mentor. And until the next video, peace out.